Hey everybody, it's me, your old pal Dan Classic, and I'm back with another episode. Last time, we took a look at the very first Gumby figures and accessories. And this time, hopefully, we're looking at something else. Will you be serious, Jess? Anyway, today we're going to take a look at what came next for Gumby in the 80s and 90s. I was hoping you'd lost interest by now. Not a chance. Ah, can't you find at least something to hate about these figures today? Or maybe at least curse a little bit? I'll do my fucking best, Jess. Raz Holly, hit the music! Last time, we went through the lakeside years, seeing the original Gumby toys and accessories. All good things come to an end, and in 1973, a lawsuit between Lakeside, who by then had changed their name to Leisure Dynamics, pff, great name for a toy company, and Gumby's creators. The suit dealt with a few issues, but at the core, it was a conflict regarding whether or not Lakeside had purchased the Gumby trademark or just the license to create Gumby toys. In the end, nobody was making Gumby toys for about nine years. The show was done, and Art Clokey had ditched his wife and kids to become a hippie. You can't make this stuff up. And for a while, the world was without Gumby. But then, toward the end of the decade, Revival theaters began showing Gumby shorts before the movies. The reception was so good that the theaters began showing Gumby cartoons as features and word was out, Gumby is back, bitches. The old show was put back into syndication and a new show was put into production. A whole new generation of kids would be introduced to Gumby. Growing up in the 80s, this is where I discover Gumby. This is also the era where the look of the figure gets an update. A look that has changed only slightly in the 30 plus years since. Jeez, Gorilla, get to the point already. Ah, put a lid on it, Jess. Anyway, in 1982, Jesco began producing Gumby figures. When I first encountered this early packaging, I assumed it was from the 70s. I mean, look at that orange and brown. You can almost smell the cigarette smoke. Anyhow, let's take a look at some Jesco Gumby figures. Okay, so it's Jesco Gumby from the 1980s. Here we have him on the card. And I know what you're saying. Come on, Dan, are you really going to open up this old figure from what might be 1982, 83? This is an earlier version because they do change him up later on. Why would you do that? But I mean, here, let's just take a look at the picture. I'm not going to open it up yet. Boy, is it 1979? Can you blame me that I thought that this packaging was from the 1970s when I first saw it? <laughs> I mean, it like this orange and brown motif, it is very, very 1970s. I feel like I should be smoking right now this is everything that gumby can do and it's in french so this might be from canada perhaps <laughs> maybe um well it's also in english too so maybe who knows maybe they did it so that they could sell it in multiple markets and not have to make different packaging but man i really like to see what it looks like outside of the box listen i know what you're saying Dan, you've already got a Chesco Gumby loose. I know, he's right here. Here he is. This is what he looks like. 
Um, he looks like the later versions almost of the uh, the early ones, the lake the lakeside gumbies, um, except. There are a couple things we want to talk about, but before I do that, let's get this package open! How am I gonna get this open? Gotta be really careful with these old packages! There he is. There he is! Chesco Gumby, give me one second. Oh yeah, um, I love the smell of a brand new figure. <laughs> I just had to give it a quick, a quick whiff. And um, yeah, he's bendy and he's really shiny and nice. Um, but there's something about the Jesco Gumby, um, the original, the early ones, that kind of bug me. And that is the, the thousand, thousand yard, yard stare. stare. You can't have Jesco Gumby without his pal Pokey. And look at this, the green, the green packaging. And um, there is, this is a almost later one. I mean, this is pretty much what he looks like now with the exception of the eye, the eyes are blue now. You see the main sweeps up all the way over the top. The earlier ones, they were still stopping at the ears. They were using the old molds. This is the newer mold, um, the Jesco mold. Um, that is used later on by Trend Masters as well. He gets a little bit more orange, believe it or not, but let's see, it's really hard to tell what he looks like inside the box, so let's get it open. Ah, there he is. <laughs> it's Jesco Pokey. And he poses and stands good. He's not like the other shitty ones that are old that you buy at a thrift store or a consignment store or an antique mall and you'll find that the legs are all broken and he falls over all the time. This one, he stands up just fine like that. Oh my God, it's so good to have a nice fresh Jesco Pokey out of the box. And that's what he looks like. You can tell the nice orange color and on the bottom, Jesco, China, trademark. Good stuff! You know, what I forgot to mention in the last episode was gum bitties. Um, I think I briefly mentioned them, but, but here's what they are. These are the ones that Jesco made. They're not that different from the older ones. They're going to be a little bit more uh, stiff. Um, they're not poseable. They look like this all the time. Um, and what happened to this? Um, oh, well remembered. If you remember a few episodes ago, I, I, I showed everybody how to deal with something like this. You know, when these boxes, when they were to put them out, out for sale, this would be punched out and you could hang it up on a peg so that people could come and buy it. What must have happened is that someone got a hold of a box of these things and never opened it up never even punched out the hole. This is what's called unpunched. Um, but how do we, you know, that, that really bothers me. I can't hang this up on my wall and display it if I want to keep it in the box, which I don't. But in order to get rid of that, it's very easy. You just take your pinky finger and jam it right through that, right through that hole and it's, and it's all gone. It's all bye-bye, bye-bye. So that's all gone. And, and then, you know, we just go from there and open up our gumbitties. These are Jesco gumbitties. Again, like I said, they're, they don't really pose or anything, um, but they are rubbery and flexible and, um, you know, kind of, they're made out of the same material. They just don't have the wires inside and they're molded into uh, particular poses, which is fine with, um, with these because they're really hard to stand up most of the time. 
toward the end of the Jesco run here, and you can see that Gumby has his brand new design. Still in the same old box. They do change this box briefly before the whole Jesco thing uh, changes over to Trend Masters. But before we get to that, I want to know what this new design looks like. I mean, it's not like he doesn't look almost exactly like this now, and it's not like I don't have a loose one already, but I'd still like to know what this one looks like out of the box, and I can't tell with all this shiny crap in the front. Um, you know, same back on there, still says it in English and French. Um, it looks like it was purchased at KB Toys for $1.99. What a deal. Uh, well, let's take a look. <laughs> Get the Ooh, well, he's quite nice. There he is. Here he is, a Jesco Gumby. He's more rubbery than I expected him to, to feel, um, but he still poses and flexes. He has the Jesco logo, Hong Kong, on the back. Uh, the Prima Toy Company logo, all rights reserved, and yeah, that's Gumby. He's got his head bump, and this is pretty much what he looks like now. They paint him a little differently, and he's a little bit different of a color. Let's take a look and see the comparison between the two. Hey, hey, hey. There they are together, together again for the first time. Modern Gumby and the, the prototypical modern Gumby. Along with Gumby's new look, Jesco would get a new name, Trend Masters. Trend Masters was a super prominent toy maker in the 1990s, producing such lines as Voltron, no, not that Voltron, Ghostbusters Extreme, and of course, there was Gumby. But this was the decade of Extreme, Extreme Sports, Extreme Caffeine, Extreme Wrestling, and a simple bendable figure from the 1960s wasn't gonna cut it. Well, according to Trend Masters. So what do you do? Well, they changed his color to begin with. Quick question, what color is Gumby? Well, if you said green, Trend Masters says, shove it up your ass, Grandpa! What are we, the fucking Muppets? 90s Gumby is a dark bluish green color. Looking it up, the closest color I can find is called Ocean, which last time I checked is fucking blue. Let's take a look at some Trend Masters Gumby. And it's the 90s, and it's time for Trend Masters. Jesco changed its name from the boring snooze fest that was Jesco, I guess, and changed it to Trend Masters. Trend Masters. We're Trend Masters, we're Extreme, and Gumby's fucking blue now. So uh, here he is, Blue Gumby, in the box. The Adventures of Gumby and Friends, as seen on Nickelodeon. I always wondered why uh, Nickelodeon never bought Gumby. Kind of weird. It bought every other goddamn thing in the world, but um, maybe he wasn't for sale. I don't know. Here on the back, you see we've kind of got the collect them all. Uh, Gumby, Goo, Pokey, Prickle, Minga, the Blockheads. Um, there were some more of those in the 80s that were released as well. I've only really ever been, been able to find the uh, the smaller ones, the, the gum bitties of those. Um, I'm sure there were bigger ones in the 80s. There was a ton of crap out there in the 1980s. But as far as the 90s, they had a whole line of these in the standard Gumby size. You can collect them all. I've got Gumby and I've got um, some other shit that we're going to see here uh, coming up. But you know what coming next. And I know what you're saying. That Why couldn't you just leave well enough alone, Dan, and, and leave these things in the box? They waited, they've been sitting here for 20, 30 years in some cases, and never got opened. They've, they've escaped, escaped being, you know, messed up. Well, you know what, the corners are kinda, kinda bent. See, see how, how bent the corner is now? Um, so yeah, I might as well just open it up. Oh, you piece of And 
And there he is! There he is! He's 1990s! Welcome to the 90s, Gumby! Um, you're blue now. Um, this is a very blue Gumby color. I don't know if it's coming across on the camera as blue, but in my hand, this thing is blue. This is a blue Gumby. I, I, I can't describe. Here is what he looks like next to a very green, very modern Gumby. Gumby's supposed to be green. Now, he wasn't always like this bright green color, but yeah, he's not supposed to be blue. Um, as far as the posability, it is pretty much what you'd expect. Um, he bends and poses, and he's just, he feels just like the, the modern one. Um, he's 30 years old and uh, feels like the one that I just got. Um, you know, the, the brand new ones. Okay, so, um, so if you remember the adventures of Gumby and Friends, uh, Gumby was in a band. And there were some other characters that they come up with, and um, this is one of them. This is No Buckle. Uh, Gumby was in a band. This guy's in the band. Um, he's not Pokey. He's not Prickle. He's not Goo. Or the Blockheads. Um, he's No Buckle. And nobody seems to remember these, these other characters. He is the proverbial dinner dog or Ku Klux Klam of the Gumby universe. Um, but I got this for a pretty good price. It's open up for this piece of shit. I don't even like, I don't even care. Let's just open it up. And there he is, no buckle. He's got troll hair and he's hardly fucking able to bend. He doesn't even really move. Um, so there's that. Um, <laughs> no buckle. Would you look at the size of this thing? He's like a giant. Um, <laughs> I can barely fit him in the frame. He's like a foot and a half long. He's a giant Gumby. There was a big pokey too. Uh, people are trying to sell these for crazy amounts of money online. Uh, mine doesn't have any hardly uh, ability to pose anymore. His arms are kind of stuck where they're at and he's, he seems dirty. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna stop touching him now. Here's something that'll piss you off, or at least piss me off. I thought this glowed in the dark when I bought it. Um, it doesn't. It actually turns out it was a line of gummies they released in pastel springtime colors. As if that needed to be done. He's basically, he's Trendmaster's Gumby, um, and he's light green. Uh, at least he's green. Trendmasters did take a page from the original line and produce Gumby and Pokey with accessories. I've been able to pick up a few, so let's see how they compare to the originals. Would you get a load of this weak shit? Um, this is Cowboy Gumby by Trendmasters. Um, they're kind of trying to do the accessory thing that they did back in the day, if you remember the last episode with the cowboy and fireman and the space and all that good stuff. Um, we ended up with these in the 90s. He's got a lasso that he barely holds on to. Um, he has these mitts and <laughs> these boots that <laughs> attach to him. Um, um, granted, it's more than he came with back in the day, but the quality of the stuff, it's just Happy Meal toy plastic stuck on top of Gumby. Um, and it's just, you know, he's just a standard Gumby figure or whatever. He's okay. Um, yeah, I mean, that's it, man. Like, he's got a cowboy hat. He doesn't come with pistols anymore. Uh, and, uh, yeah, that's that, man. Like, there it is. Cowboy Gumby. Okay, so to... And today, um, we're going to take a look at the, the incredible, incredible adventures, adventures of, Gumby. of Gumby. And um, this is the same line that we had the Cowboy Gumby in. This is the um, Buzz Lightyear looking fucking Gumby. Wow. Um, this is from 1996, I want to say. Probably, yeah, 96. Uh, Prima Toy Company, all right. Reserve. We got all of our legal, legal mumbo jumbo. We got a lot more accessories this time around. There is a cowboy pokey and a uh, astronaut pokey. 
And there's also a Soldier Gumby up here on the top. There is a Rockstar Gumby that looks like Eddie Van Halen. Um, a Rockstar Pokey. Um, a Construction Gumby. They're basically doing the village people with Gumby. Here he is as a doctor. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Yep. In the interest of better quality and value, we are constantly improving and updating our products. Consequently, pictures on this package may sometimes differ from the model enclosed. Thank you. Um, I can tell you why it differs from the model enclosed. Do you want to know why it differs from the model enclosed? Because these are all fucking computer generated images and aren't pictures of the actual fucking toys. <sighs> Here he is, Space Gumby. There's also a Robot Gumby who looks kind of similar, um, is a little bit more simple. But this, this looks very similar to Buzz Lightyear. Um, I think he might predate him by a year or two. I don't fucking remember when Toy Story came out. But again, maybe you can argue about it in the fucking comments. Or you can tell me, yeah, you're wrong. You did the junk. And then anyway, oh, fuck you. It's getting opened up. And look at this piece of shit. And there he is. You can pose his arms and he's he's spaceman, his space guy, and his shit falls apart. <sighs> okay, so I looked it up. Toy Story came out in 1995. This comes out in 1996. Um, coincidence? No, not not at all. Especially, um... <sighs> to infinity and into the fucking garbage. Well, that's all for this time and not a moment too soon. What do you mean? I was hoping you'd get so mad at these 90s figures that you'd slice one open and see what it looked like on the inside. It's true, Jess. Most figures from the 1990s are dog shit. So you know what I'm gonna do? Not do another Gumby episode, I hope. Oh, I'm making another episode. <sighs> and I'm dissecting a Gumby figure yeah! next time on the Dan Classic Show. Raz Holly, hit the music!